one of the things about how I designed this kind of thing is I want it to be as boring and as simple and safe for the operator as possible. I want that operator to be able to just basically do circles around the property as they're opening up a trail and then they are able to, to focus on the job. They're not having to worry about ditches or anything. So what I'm doing out here is I'm walking through the woods looking for ditches, looking for rock piles and just kind of making it a little bit more visible. Um, I'm also remarking some of the trail because now he's into where the original lines were. You can see how much he's cleared out here. And he doesn't have to make it this thin, so we talked about that a little bit. Uh, some of the bigger trees he's cutting down because he's got to get through them because that thing doesn't, you know, it doesn't turn. Yeah, see the logs fall over on top of the the, the machine. So he's got a, I think he says 60 inches wide on that sucker. So he needs to be able to push into it and not have the trees fall back on top of him. But what he's gonna do is he's, he's gonna work a circle out there and make it wider and then shred up as much as he can to just make it a, like a drive through. But again, on this site, I'm very comfortable with this kind of slash. Because again, I want mushrooms to grow. I wanna have firewood. I wanna have other resources while I'm getting to the final uh, plan and now, see, he, now he's going to wide that trail up. So you want to have for a regular road, if you're going to have a truck, 13 feet wide. So a lot of these trails are eight foot wide, which is okay for a four by four or, or kind of a, a quad. But you want to have a trail that is 13 feet wide if you're going to run a pickup truck through it. That's one way. Okay, so along the way, you need to have a little turn off or a little section that's 21 feet wide so that you can pull over a vehicle and another vehicle can pass you. Um, if you are gonna have any kind of equipment like a dump truck back here or uh, larger excavators, um, maybe a, 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 pump and, a pump and tank company or well company coming back here, you wanna have a path that is 21 feet wide at a minimum so that they can get their equipment in. Now I'm gonna be pulling a travel trailer that's 20 feet long, the truck is 13 feet long, I want to make sure that I got a nice teardrop. I want to be able to come in my my, uh, my 13 foot wide road and I want a 21 foot wide road all the way around this wooded area as the priority because I want to be able to get that travel trailer in here. I want to be able to bring that travel trailer in here and do the loop and park that baby and still have enough room out the front door to enjoy myself. Now loops are awesome ways to design your access because the loop itself, it might only be one-way traffic, but if it's only 13 feet wide, then you can, you can get a vehicle through. Um, if you've got quads or four-wheelers and stuff like that, eight foot wide is just fine, um, but you still wanna have little turnarounds that are gonna be uh, wider than the radius of the quad. So go do a donut and then measure how, the radius of the donut. So from the center out, out and you will know uh, how wide you need your path. So it should probably be at least 16 feet across in diameter and uh, eight foot radius. So most of this equipment is gonna do an eight foot, but if you have somebody who has a smaller piece of equipment or an older piece of equipment, uh, then, the, then the flail or the forest mulcher uh, may have to do more than one run. But again, you want these turnarounds so you're not doing a seven point turnaround like I did in the middle of the um, the eight, the 13 foot wide road that comes in here. Now again, we got a 13 foot wide road in the middle. We got eight foots around the perimeter of the property and we've got um, a lot of little clearings. So if we're primitive camping, for example, we can, we can, this little cut, the clearing right here is basically where he came around the corner and it looks a little messy. You might be saying, oh man, I don't want that happen to my property. But I, I tell you, kid will have a hammock up in the trees over there. Some of those trees that have been damaged will take down. We'll have a little campfire on the ground here, and I'll have the trailer parked up on the hill so that I can have my uh, my uh, my electricity and all that for for my glamping. Uh, but ultimately, you see how the outer trail connects all these areas. So if we're riding mountain bikes, or we got a four wheeler in here, or we got something like that, we've got access to our campsites. Another thing too about these roads is that you're not gonna use them in wet weather. So all of this wood and everything on the ground here, a small four-wheeler is gonna have problems. Okay, now we're gonna pick this wood up and we're gonna use it in the campfire. We're gonna use it 
I might rake it to get it all up. We're going to stack and cut some of this wood when it dries out. So it's not going to be really out. But you don't want to be racing across this stuff with a four-wheeler. Now, a full-size truck with four-wheel drive will go across this just fine. So again, road design matters. We want roads on contour and roads that are level. Because that big opening in the woods has nothing to buffer the rain. We don't want to make a muddy mess out here. Now, we could go into a whole course on uh, trail design. And these are trails, by the way. These are not roads. I might be calling them roads here and there, but they don't have hard pack under them. And we don't necessarily want hard pack under them because, again, we're just getting familiar with the land. We're just getting access on the land. Uh, and we're doing it in such a way that leaves us with these little clusters of trees here and there that are easy to clear out with the, with the chainsaw. Um, but again it's about utility value can can a couple of my buddies a couple friends and family come out here pop up some tents have a great little time spend a weekend or a week can i get the trailer in and out of here can i get my truck in and out of here that's what we're worried about here that's our focus and then are we able to do it in such a way that doesn't damage the land for the long term now i know some of you tree huggers are going to be saying oh my gosh you're damaging the no, sustainable forestry includes uh, forest mulching. We're not hauling away any biomass. The majority of this wood is going to compost in the next year or two. It is protecting the roots of these trees. And then when we cut down additional trees, such for firewood or building buildings or, or anything, we're cutting down what was damaged. So it's kind of like a select cut. So this is, this is damage on this tree. We're going to cut this down. Now, because a lot of these poles are getting turned into woodworking projects or they're getting turned into primitive camp camping, I'm going to actually gird these trees. So if I see a damaged tree, I'll cut the bark about this wide down here and start letting that tree dry out. And then it's going to dry out standing, which makes it dangerous to fall if it dries out all the way. But then at some point, I'll cut it down with a chainsaw, cut it into an 8 to 10 foot section or, or 10 to 12 foot section, and be done with it. Be basically have it dry, ready to ready to make a little timber frame. Now again, with this ground exposed, we're also inoculating for mushrooms. We're also adding seed. So what will end up happening is we'll have grass on most the majority of this. Now because we're not driving on it in the winter, we're not driving on it in the rain, uh, at least not with trucks, um, we're not going to have to worry about getting all muddy mess. But look at this. This stuff is great. You can pop a tent up right up on top of a lot of this. Um, you can drag some of these sticks out of the way and make little little projects or cut it up for firewood. But essentially, we're multiplying the land value. Now, I sent the forest mulcher down that way to widen this trail up because he got me a real nice little path here. But again, it's only eight feet wide. Great for hiking, great for biking, great for four-wheeling. Now, a contour path with a four-wheeler is not going to get all torn up. Oh, by the way, if you guys like riding horses, these are great for horses. And I'm possibly seeing another little rock pile here. Yeah, look at that. There's a rock pile here underground. Oops, I'm making a shadow. There's another little rock pile here. See that? But an eight-foot wide trail is perfect for horses, too. So if you bring some horses out and you hike the trails, Excellent. Oh, look at this. This is another big rock pile right here. So, so I need to geotag these rock piles because he, he, can, he can cut a little further up on this one. But um, it's not going to be so good to drive a, drive a trailer over top. These trailers are not all-terrain trailers. So, okay, let's talk about the next step. Let's say I get in here. He's cleared it up. It's perfect for horses. It's perfect for four-wheelers. It's 21 feet wide but it's not level. Well, what do I got to do then? Well, because there's no trees on it, I can simply get a bobcat. I can get a, a, somebody with a bulldozer and we can start digging these trails out. We're going to dig them out level with a, a drain grid on it because we're going to assume the water runs off once it's a hardscape. But again, I don't need to put permanent roads on here until I'm sure what my design is going to be. But I can hike in here with a backpack. I can set up a tent or a hammock. I can be good to go. Look, there's a little nook right there too. 
boy, look, you know, geez, I'm just thinking about camping, folks. Look at that little nook. It is a saw forest mulch down here. Oh my gosh, look, oh, so padded. My old back would even enjoy that. See, folks, how this works? I hope you have a project that you're working on. If you have any questions about your project, be sure to contact me. Um, we do offer uh, consulting services. A lot of this stuff was done with satellites. And, um, you know, you, we don't get out with drones or anything, but you could use a drone. And ultimately, it's much more sustainable than clear cutting. It is very economical and it leaves behind all the biomass. I cannot stress enough. We don't want to take from the forest without giving back. So all this biomass, that's uh, the original forest floor is still there. And then on top of it, we've got the mulch and we're doing it in a non-destructive manner. Um, and I'm actually out here picking up trash uh, while he's getting that done. So I see another bit of trash I'm gonna pick up and uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Again, I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. Visit www.prosperityhomestead.org and go to the contact page and ask your questions. I would love to hear about your project and I am excited to see this kind of project go. It's, it looks like a mess right now, but it, like you saw with the other videos, in a month or so, it'll just be forest floor <laughs> and it'll be easy to walk on it'll be safe and the wildlife perks up like crazy um, we're not damaging the forest we're in fact helping the forest and we're doing it in a managed way be sure to ask your questions below like and subscribe i'll see you in the next video